Good morning and welcome to our 10 minutes at not quite 10 o'clock today. Um, today we are going to talk about knowing your offer. So we've talked about knowing your market and knowing your product and uh, knowing your customer and this week we need, or today, we need to understand our offer. Now with your offer we've got to consider it from the customer's perspective. They're going to be looking at it thinking, okay, what's in it for me? And in the nicest way possible, no one really cares about you. Well, not at all. Not, not really. <laughs> not <at laughs> what all. they're after is what's in it for them. So you could you could put together a load of a load of text. You could put together your content, and you could say, "We do this, we do that." But this is actually, in marketing terms, what is known as weeing on the audience, mm. where quite frankly, you just spam the words "we" into everything. That's basically a CV. So, um, <laughs> quite frankly, they're not after a CV. They want to know what's in it for them. So. When you sell, make sure you need to clearly and quickly help them understand what is in it for them. And make the, <laughs> got to make, your, make sure this is clear because a confused mind will always, always, say, no. always say no. Because quite frankly, if they don't know what's in it for them or what they're actually going to benefit from it, why would they buy? So remember that confused mind always says no. And it is a big mistake to just sell a product or a service without actually considering your value ladder, which Lisa's going to go into in a bit more detail. Yes. So what is a value ladder? Um, one of the hardest parts of being entrepreneurs is going out and selling your service. If you are offering an ongoing service, like us, for example, accountants and bookkeepers, people come to us and we deliver the same service month on month on month. So it's not difficult for us to retain a customer unless we do something terribly wrong. If you're selling um, hypnotherapy or marketing skills or graphic design or electricians um, selling a, you know, a house fix or a, a plug fitting or something like that, all of these products are very, very quick to be received, consumed, and then the relationship with the customer ends. So what can we offer as a value ladder? A value ladder is... Um, a, a process whereby we're offering more and more and more and more at a perceived higher value and a higher cost in order to try and get a longer lifespan out of that customer and a more um, profitable service with them. So, so what do I mean by that? So I'm going to talk about the value ladder for a digital product because that's probably the easiest to maintain. And, and I believe there is probably a digital product in most businesses, not necessarily all of them, but in most businesses. So what do I mean by that? So, well, take us, for example. Um, we offer a number of um, fabulous freebies. And we call them fabulous freebies, and they're products where um, the client's going to get an instant win. Um, it might be a checklist. It might be um, a really short class. It might be an ebook, something like that. But it, re it resolves an immediate problem. So a checklist to take them through payroll or a checklist to take them through month end or a checklist for their VAT returns. Quick, easy and functional. And it helps them save money and it helps them you know, save time. It, it avoids or helps them eliminate the fear of what they've forgotten or what they've missed out. They might have missed an important step. So it ticks several boxes in terms of the customer's particular needs. So think about in your business, what do you have that is, you know, a five or a 10 minute consumption freebie? It's easy to produce that you can then give away to your customers or your potential customers in order to receive an email address. So you don't give it away for free. You don't put it on your website and let them download it. You have it set up so that in order to download your product, they have to give you their email address. So you've probably downloaded products yourself or guides or white papers or things like that in order to capture somebody's email address. So that's the first level of your value ladder. You've given something away for free and you've gained their trust. So the next thing you might be offering, and we've all seen those um, you know, online forms where you go into the form and you get your fab freebie and then there's a, an example of where it says, oh, you know, before you go, please wait, let's uh, try and sell you something else. So the next thing, the next thing that you're going to offer 
is so for a digital product is perhaps a masterclass. So it might be, um, you know, a one hour could be a live webinar, could be a pre recorded webinar, it could be something that gets people excited that again resolves an issue that they had before. So it's worth way more than the free product that you gave away earlier. They've got your trust and now they're more inclined to buy, say, a £29 product, uh, which might be a one hour masterclass. So um, we have one, for example, that we use, which is instant profit. So for and we sell it as for action takers. And if you take action and if you buy this product, then you'll make X many more pounds back. So they get a return on their investment. They get money in their um, profit in their business, money in their pocket. So again, you're thinking about how that product is going to tickle their boxes for the modest sum of, say, £29. So the next step on your value ladder, you've taken them through the free step, you've taken them through the, the small paid product. And I've seen um, some digital products that are, you know, as, as cheap as 29 or as cheap as two or three pounds or 29 pounds or even 100 pounds. And that's the first level on the value ladder. Then you go up to the next level. The next level might be an online course like Tribe, for example. Um, so Stu McLaren's Tribe, you'll have done his free bit, you'll have um, got his hook product, you might have, I mean, he goes directly from the free one straight into Tribe because he's got the history and because he's well known and people in the industry who know they want Tribe will go and find Tribe. So his value ladder is well known. Well, yours and ours won't be, not yet anyway. So your next stage up the value ladder is to provide something that people want to spend a bit more money on. So maybe it is that course or it is that membership site. So it might be 100, 150 or, you know, three or four hundred pounds a month in order to subscribe to the next level. So once you've got their trust and you've got people working on you on that basis. So the advantage of the membership or the online course is that you'll have built something that's pre-recorded. Um, you might perhaps show up in a Facebook Live, but generally it's a one to many relationship. And so people get an insight into you, but they don't get you. Your next level on the value ladder is your coaching program or your, um, you know, working one to one with you or your actual um, product. It, it might be that you're a consultant and you want people to work up the value ladder and they'll have bought your, you know, they've had your freebie, they've had your masterclass, they've joined a membership club. And now they want to work with you personally to grow their own businesses. Now, that's when they're paying the big bucks because they get direct access to you. So the closer they get to you, the more they pay for the product. So that's your value ladder. Mm. The main concept of it is you may want to be selling the underlying product you might want to be selling is the high value one right at the end of the ladder. Yeah, yeah. But the fact is, if you've got someone who doesn't know you and you're just trying to hard sell them that right at the start, it's really difficult. But the concept of the value ladder is get them in at the low level. Build them up, you're nurturing them, you're getting them used to buying products mm. from you, getting them used to communicating with you, and it makes the sale at the end easier and, of course, more profitable as well. It does. So you've got an offer, you've got your product, you've worked out what your offer is and how you're going to increase its value. That One of the, the hardest things to do is to stop selling things an hour at a time or a product at a time and think about how your one sale can evolve into many sales and it might just be more of the same. So if you're a vitamin mm. supplements company, the the uh, your intention is to get people into a regular buying cycle with you rather than just keep shopping on Amazon next time they want the supplements. So there'll be an offer and an upsell and maybe eBooks on fitness and things like that that can go with them that enhances the value of your offer in your customer's mind in order for them to progress up your value ladder and keep coming back. So they keep taking up your offers and they keep buying from you. So consider how exactly you are going to offer your product. And then we need to identify where we are going to actually send those offers. Hopefully we know that because yeah. we've already looked at where our customer hangs out earlier this week. our market earlier on this week. How will you get your offer in front of a customer? And also, really importantly, what will your offer actually say? So there's a lot of aspects to think about before we can even start putting together an offer. But first things, consider those, have a look into those, and then we can move on to the really, really crucial parts. Yeah, so this is the toughie now, is um, once you've got your offer out there in front of people, you want people to say yes to that offer, and you want people to start taking it up. So you've got to go right back to the basics. What's in it for your customer? What's their pain point? What's the hook 
that is going to get them to notice your product above all the other noise in the marketplace. So it might be um, the image, it might be the headline, it might be um, you know, a snapshot about the, the thing that you're solving. So whatever it might be, whether it's lose weight fast, whether it's you know, save time now, whether it's um, you know, learn to play golf in, in three weeks, and th there's got to be a hook. There's got to be something that really appeals to your customer and makes them stop scrolling through whatever they're looking at or to stop and look at your ad above everything else that's out there in the marketplace. Now, the next thing after your hook is you need a story. Now, stories are different depending on uh, what kind of product you're selling and what your audience is. But the, the easiest way to sell a product is to tell a story. And you tell a story that takes you, that puts the customer in your avatar shoes and makes them feel the things that you're feeling and you're explaining and you're talking about through your story. So if you're talking about trying to sell an umbrella, you're not trying to sell an umbrella because it's wet. You're selling an umbrella on a cold, dark, dusky, you know, freezing day. You're chilly. You're wrapping yourself in your, your coat. You're trying to get dry. The wind is burning. You're trying to paint a picture and make people feel like they're in the shoes yeah. of your character that you're trying to, to use to sell your product. And then at the end resolution is that they're dry and they're happy and their hair's not all frizzy and they're and they're, their Mac's they're, not soaked through. Their Mac's not <laughs> soaked through. When they arrive at their destination, they're happy, they're greeted, they walk through the door and they're greeted by their happy family and their happy house with the red door. And you know, you're you're trying to paint a picture to make the whole thing more visually appealing and to, to trigger something in that person to make them excited about your product or service that's going to make them want to sell. Now, we're trying to do that for the bookkeeping side of things. So that's, um, you know, it's a challenge for us. But if we can do it, you can do it too. So then once you've got your hook, you've drawn their attention, you've got your story, which has made the customer resonate with what you've got and makes them want to buy, then you've got to deliver an offer that makes them think, wow, I've got to have that and I've got to have it now. So you need to think about that. So hook, story, offer. So that's it from us today. So have a think about that and have a th think about how that affects your business and how that might help you move your business forward by offering new products and getting the services out there to your customer. So thank you for joining us today. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, please let us know in the comments. Um, please give us some likes and some thumbs up. Um, if you have any queries, please let us know. We were around today, so we'll be glad to answer them. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.